Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. The Power BI team released a roadmap for workspaces, and in this video, I'm breaking it down. Let's do this. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. The Power BI team released a blog post looking at the roadmap for workspaces. There's a lot of detail inside of this, and I wanna make sure you understand what this really means for you, both as a tenant admin, but just as a user of Power BI as well. Last year, we had the general availability of the new workspace experience. So that means we've got classic workspaces and we've got the new workspace experience. Late last year, they released the ability for a workspace admin to upgrade from the classic workspace to the new workspace. And that's where things had been left. And I've talked with some customers about the new workspace experience. There's some hesitation with moving to those. There's still a lot of people on classic workspaces. There's general frustration about when folks create a team in Microsoft Teams, it creates the Office 365 Modern Group, which in turn creates the classic workspace. So now teams are getting created and there's all these classic workspaces that are getting listed. So. There's a lot going on. So this roadmap blog really walks through, okay, this is where we're at, this is where we're going and when we're going. And there's three general timeframes that are broken down in this blog. There's what's coming in the summertime of this year. There's what's coming in the October timeframe of this year. And then there's what's coming after that. So three phases, let's break this down. All right, summertime 2020, when we're thinking summertime, obviously we've got you know June, July, August, September. And so with the way other updates are coming out, if you look at the release note, there's a lot of stuff targeted towards July, but this could stretch from July to August. It could technically stretch into early September, but that's the time frame you need to wrap your head around in terms of when these items are coming. So first off, the new workspace experience upgrade for workspace admins will be generally available. So that means it's no longer a preview item to migrate from a classic workspace to the new workspace experience. So hopefully that will ease some folks' mind in terms of, hey, yes, now we can move to those items. There's going to be a banner that's introduced into the classic workspaces just to let folks know, hey, you can upgrade this workspace. Now is the time to go to the new workspace experience. So if you haven't done it already, that's probably the time I would really start looking at it. The other big thing that's coming in the summer, and this one's gonna be pretty huge, is the ability to block the creation of classic workspaces. So today, when you go in, as of the recording of this video, when you go in to create a new workspace, it defaults to the new workspace experience, but you still have the ability to create a classic workspace. That will be blocked, or at least there's gonna be a tenant setting where admins can block the creation of classic workspaces. What this also means is that when you create a team in Microsoft Teams, it will not create the classic workspace in Power BI. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. This is huge, right? So you will be able to block classic workspace creation and block teams from creating new workspaces or the old classic workspaces inside of Power BI. If you have existing classic workspaces, they will still exist, so those aren't gonna go away, but any new creation will be blocked. This is disabled by default, so your Power BI admins will have to go into the tenant settings and disable or block the creation of classic workspaces. I would imagine a lot of them will do that. All right, let's move into the October timeframe of 2020. And there are a couple things that are coming in this window. The first option is going to be an option for admins to hide classic workspaces from the list. And so you may have a lot of classic workspaces that are out there that were created by all these teams creations. The way that you get rid of those today, if something was created, if a classic workspace was created from teams, is you need to migrate that to the new workspace experience and then delete that workspace. That's the only way you can get rid of it. Otherwise, it's just in the list for whoever's a member of that modern group. What will happen is if you have a ton of those and you're like, look, I don't wanna go through each one of those and delete them, you'll just be able to hide any existing classic workspaces. We don't have to go through individually and migrate, delete, migrate, delete, migrate, delete, migrate, delete. You get the idea. Also in the October timeframe, Power BI admins will have the ability to upgrade the classic workspace to the new workspace experience. So today only the workspace admins can perform that action. 
Power BI admins have commented to me also like, look, we wanna be able to do this. Specifically, they wanna be able to do it in bulk. But so the way this will work is in October, what will happen is Power BI admins can go to the workspace area of the Power BI admin portal. They can select a given workspace. If it's a classic workspace, they'll have the option to upgrade it to the new workspace experience. If you are a Power BI admin, be sure you're communicating this to the folks the admins of the workspace so they're aware of it. Don't just surprise them, please. And then this will do exactly the same thing as what a workspace admin initiated workspace upgrade will do. If you're using content packs or the old content packs, just know that that functionality will go away and then you'll have to go with the app approach for the workspaces. And then workspace admins will get notified that, hey, your workspace just got upgraded, whether you wanted to or not. Also in October, what will happen is the complete deprecation of the old classic workspaces, which means, you know, when I talked initially in the summertime, admins will have the option to block classic workspace creation in October. There's no choice. They will get blocked. So as of October, there will be no more creation of the classic workspace experience. So you create a team, it will not create a workspace inside of Power BI. This is great. So summertime, you get the option to block that if you so choose. Come time October, you have no choice. It gets blocked. All right, looking past October as we get into 2021, which by the way, can get here as fast as it wants. The idea is that there will be now bulk operations for people to upgrade classic workspaces to the new workspaces. So you'd be able to say, look, all the classic workspaces, boom, upgrade those to the new workspace and completely get rid of classic workspaces from the Power BI tenant. That's really what Power BI admins have been asking for. And so the hope is that this will be here in early 2021. And then past that, or in the blog post says mid 2021, this is when a forced migration is looked to occur. So if you haven't done the bulk migration, if you haven't been doing individual migrations by mid 2021, it will just be done for you and you will be completely in the new workspace experience, whether you wanted to or not. I would imagine there may be some exceptions there. So some organizations, if there are reasons for not doing that, communicate that with your account teams, communicate that with the Power BI team to make sure that you guys are in a good place. But at some point, this will happen. Check out the blog post. I've got a link for it down in the description below. It's got all the details. And I wanna hand this off to you. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are, where you are with your journey with workspaces, and if you're ready for 2021 to get here. All right, if you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.